depends on the bull. Depends on the pig. Fair enough. All righty. Well, then here we go. Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show for the world of low dollar endurance racing and oddball car culture. Why, it doesn't matter what kind of limit champ or lucky track dog you run, SEC or NASA, we don't discriminate as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, news, notes, the sounds of freedom as a jet fighter goes overhead, as well as news and notes in the world of low dollar endurance racing and whether it's on the spot, <laughs> telespeak, or we're lucky enough and Chrissy gives us just a tip, we're sure you'll all giggle a little and learn even less. So, everyone, everyone reports, reports to the, the pack. pack. Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks. All right, all right. Uh, hey, I'm really excited about news. Almost as excited about news and notes as you are. You said it twice, so there you go. This is Chris. <laughs> this is Chrissy. This is Jeff. And I'm mental. And we are everyone racers. Thank you for coming back and listening to a Chrysler Cloud Car episode of our podcast. It's episode 94. I'm going to say right here, apologize for uh, episode 93. If you were missing it last week, it is now available for you to listen to. So if you're listening to 94 and have not listened to 93, please go back and listen to it. A very exciting episode on tires. Very very exciting. <laughs> anyway, if you're not driving, make sure you get your e- e- E1R bingo card. And if you're so inclined, you can check off sarcasm, which already happened early before the show even started. Actually, Chris just gave some. So, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, what you work out like a free square. Who is, this, <laughs> who is this random man that has just talked? Um, okay, mm-hmm. mental. What you working on? So we had to get a new set of rear tires for the BMW Beater. I uh, noticed the inside was almost corded. I did, however, get that sensor swapped out. The the P1112 temp intake sensor. So I got that, and I got rid of the check engine light, which allowed me to get it smogged. But it is now displaying an interesting and annoying problem. And I'm going to throw this out there. So this is a long one. Stay with me, guys. So the uh, first time you can this check happened, that one off too. Yeah. The first time this happened, Vicky was driving the car all day, and then we got in the car. We drove downtown to meet some friends. Uh, it was sitting at a half a tank of gas, and it dies on the freeway, completely dead. I kick it into neutral. I limp it off to the side, and it basically gets to where it will start, run for 90 seconds, and then die. feels like, a, a, like it's l- losing fuel or air. That night, after it cools off, we drive home, and it's fine. So I think maybe like the airflow meter is bad so i swap that out it does it again this time at a quarter of a tank vicky had driven it all day does it again we put a full tank of gas in it it fires up drives all the way home and then the very next day with barely an eighth of that tank it does it a third time but what i've noticed is that if i keep my foot in it it'll stay running so i'm coming up to stop lights and kind of putting it in a neutral and feathering the gas to try and keep it running Sounds like a- terrible way to drive it is a terrible way to drive now the 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 answer goes to fuel pump but we've got the little bit of documentation we have on the car says the fuel pump was replaced the fuel pump and the sending unit were replaced less than five thousand miles ago which means they had this problem before too and they couldn't solve it so Mm -hmm. that's why okay because the car sat for so long my current working theory is bad gas in the tank but i'm open to suggestions if, if it's an intermittent running situation, it mm-hmm. means it's probably not like the pump going bad or something or bad gas. It's it's something else that's inter, that's coming in and out. Um, and it's not throwing any check engine codes. No. The fact that you're in, in the, the, the fires of hell there doesn't help <laughs> because your underhood temperatures are getting really high and who knows what's baked in there. Um, True. Like maybe you – or maybe like – is it always when you've been running it for a while, or is it the other no. day that it start first thing in the morning? All right, so that rules out vapor lock in the fuel system. Um, I'm thinking it's electrical. I'm thinking you got a loose ground or a loose wire with a fuel pump relay or some electrical thing going on. So if I were a guy that was living out there, not working because I was waiting for my security clearance. <laughs> I go out in the early days. Hey, hey, I got a job yesterday. Uh-huh. I'm working it. Yeah. And then I'd be trying to clean every ground I can find and every relay I can find, looking for loose pins and stuff like that. Good. Could it be a filter plugging thing or a flow plugging? 
<sighs> Usually, if it is, it happens under times of highest demand. <laughs> so it's po- possible, but it doesn't seem likely to me. I don't know. Yeah. I all think right. you should just cut all the grounds off. Because I hear somebody once said, who is not on the show currently, uh, that you could just do that. Just, These are just grounds. Just, it's not a problem. Just, cut you know, cut, cut all, all the grounds. Cut all the grounds off because they connect you to the ground, and I'm trying to fly. That, mm-hmm. No, I like that. I'm just going to cut every black wire on that car. Yeah, sure. That's good. Okay, okay. great, Christy. Cool. What are you doing? Cool. Uh, so we. Took I have a no lovely, idea what you're doing, Christy. Right. I like when we <laughs> ask each other. It's funny. Uh, so we took a, a lovely trip in the NSX. Spent a wonderful weekend in uh, Cape Cod, and our trip back Monday, we left a little early. Uh, Less traffic, which was fantastic, because usually we slog through the hills of, uh, not hills, uh, sad road of Connecticut. And I was picking up some busy parts of the household duties um, because of what is Chris is going to tell you he is working on. Um, And today, I uh, we I mentally note that we had a uh, a lovely vegan meal to this evening, Um, and we uh, just came back from a bucket list museum downtown. Uh, it's called the Simeon Museum, and it was pretty interesting, but I had to, like, run through it because they were closing. And uh, and I'm picking up a pro- – I just got chosen to be part of a project, uh, which I started to mention before, and now I might be more confused than I was when I thought I knew what was going on. Uh, it has something to do with cars, a road rally, and 19th Amendment. Uh, should be pretty fun, but it's a long way off next June, and there's more to come on that. So I'll tell you more when I know more. How about that? Chris, why don't cool. you tell – Tell me about what you're doing. Great. Well, I can give it Jeff's what you're working on. He's working on Boy Scout camp and check engine lights in his truck that was a fuel tank fuel or fuel cap, we think. Anyway, um, I was up with Christy at the Cape and did a little tree trimming while we were there. Got on a got on the roof with a electric chainsaw on the end of a pole that was super janky that we borrowed from a friend. So it was great. And when you're trying to trim trees and when you push down on the chainsaw, you know, like to cut, it would stop going. So you had to kind of hold it up just a little bit and do a real light cut on everything. But I got all kinds of trees trimmed. So that was nice. I owned an electric chainsaw when we first moved back to Georgia. I cut one limb, got in my truck, and drove to Home Depot and came back with a gas chainsaw. Yeah. Well, when you're standing on a roof with the, the end of the 10-foot pole, I'd probably rather have the electric one than the gas one. Just, I don't know, control issues, things like that. So I did that. i um, been working on the Honda, fighting axle swaps. I cannot get the axle off the intermediate shaft on the driver on the passenger side. It's just not coming <laughs> off. I have I have spent hours. It's funny that you laugh. It. It's off. It's, it's terrible. It's not funny. And it's I finally, not a ha- it's happy. No, it's not a happy place. I finally have even just bought some new tools and Amazon. They're coming tomorrow. Uh, driver's side, easy. Fifteen minutes. Done. I've also been measuring fitment for a larger radiator. I think I've found a Griffin Universal that's going to work. That'll buy us three inches in height, three inches in width, and one inch in depth. So that should help us. Where's that going to fit? We don't have that kind of room. Uh huh. Yeah, we kind of sort of do. <laughs> it means we lose the the factory hood latch, and we just have to rely on the hood pins. But that buys us the extra three <laughs> inches of height because I got to trim out go. the other side of the hood. Yeah, right? Is this a good hood idea? Hood pins are hard. We have the hood pins. <laughs> you just have to remember them. You have to use so, them. So, but uh-huh. to, to that end, uh, is this the axle that was binding up on us at uh, in New Jersey? Yeah, but it's the outer side that was binding up the inner. And the okay, inner is so out. okay, so the okay, so the inner comes out. The the one that was binding up won't come out. No, no, the one that was binding is fine. Right, okay, no problem. It's the inner one that's there was no problem. That's that's not. It's, 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 that's where it comes off the intermediate shaft. It has nothing to do with the joint itself. Okay. So, anyway. So, working on that. Um, and in addition, you've already kind of heard, we've got two special guests tonight, Alan and Bill from Garage Heroes and Training. And without giving them too much of their main topic, let's start with Alan. Alan, what you working on? What have I been working on? Well, we, had a, uh, we did some race prep. We had the race out west that we had some super fun with. And we're getting back east to getting, uh, get some more car prep going for the next race. That's what I've been working on. Yeah. Fantastic. Good idea. I didn't hear enough Capri on that. Oh. <laughs> Any Capri is enough Capri. Oh, no. He was being nonspecific. Race prep could be anything. No. As long as it's something. Something. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. um, Bill, what are you working so I, on? 
Well, we had the the family vacation, which we flew around all of Instagram and Facebook, Twitter, or whatever. Um, then we had our race out west. Uh, we got some parts for the Capri, which should be in this week. We're getting a wiring harness to try and make life a little easier. I've got a bunch of tires on order that were recommended by a, a podcast that I listened to two weeks ago, not the one that came out on tires, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Same recommendation. Same. RS4 okay. is good, right? Actually, Very good. To, to add to that, a new GRM just came out, and they did another. Mm-hmm. Andy Hollis did another, yet another tire test, which they're also good. He did one set on tires more for endurance and one for more for autocross. And for the endurance side, he had the Hankook RS4, the uh, Maxxis VR1, and some no name tire I've never heard before starts with a V. They're a drifting tire. They're trying to break into more than just drifting. Anyway, uh, Hankook RS4 continues to dominate the endurance side of the whole thing. So, hashtag well, they should totally sponsor us. Totally. It, uh, it is also well known out on the West Coast, not just the East Coast. So they mm-hmm. were they were proliferating the pits out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, various podcast stuff, guests, editing, website. Well, not so much on the website, but I'm way behind on that one. And editing. The, yeah, I've heard Ed- about that. Huh? I've heard the same. Yeah, it's 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 not worth it. Trust me. And then uh, prepping for the upcoming HPDE at Pittsburgh, which hopefully we'll see some people there that we see right now. Woo-hoo! Maybe. Maybe. All right. Everyone's All being right. pretty productive. This is great. Awesome. So maybe it's time for news and notes. We're not we're not doing ASMR intros here. I was I was I was thinking just a tip would be uh don't use a chainsaw on the roof of a house, but whatever. Hey. Uh, well if we if we had the chainsaw we would have used it. I we just wasn't didn't. wearing flip flops, so that is no. a safety tip. I knew you had glasses, safety glasses on, or sunglasses. I have there. my sunglasses on. Yeah, they're pretty <laughs> they're anyway, safeish. They are safeish. Anyway, so uh, in news and notes, an Australian baby gender reveal drone film went horribly wrong. Parents did a burnout. What appears to be a Holden, right? Looks kind of like a for- focus hatch. Because I was just watching the video. Tires blue, blue spewed blue smoke. Then there was uh, caught was a little overjoyed, and then it's I guess it. Did you think he stayed on the throttle to, until the car caught fire, uh, and the car just like actually blows up? Uh, it was pretty, and they did it in like the middle of a field, which didn't make much sense either. So uh, they didn't need to stay on it that long. Uh, the people walk away because I was just watching the. Video. Oh yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone was fine, but the 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 fire department came out and did that, and that's. YouTube is littered with people who do instead of rolling burnouts, they do standing still burnouts. And yes, you can heat rear tires up enough to cause fire. Yep, just all of a sudden just blows up. They're, they're just they're just fire really bad. dumb. Mm, Pretty much, bad. this is a big fire too. <laughs> okay, okay. So Don't blow it up. The, is this their version of the Pope uh, election at the Vatican with the smoke thing? It's yeah. uh there's there it's all these you know people put the streamers and balloons and stuff like that so he had a random set of tires that would have spewed pink smoke or blue smoke and if you ever want to kill some time when you can't sleep get on YouTube and watch Australian <laughs> burnout videos they do burnouts like nobody Wait, there's, else. Wait, is this a thing? Like that's a it's a thing? Oh, yeah, absolutely, apparently. yeah. Colored uh, colored burnout smoke is a big is, thing, especially in Australia. I, I sleep pretty well, so I don't ever just like get up and watch Australian uh, burnout videos. Burnout videos. <laughs> You're young. Your time of insomnia is coming. So no, no, you've never met my father. <sighs> All right. Well, that's anyway, it for news and notes. You know, let's go well, on it's, to it's still race. news and notes, but uh, well, yeah, race, race results. results. True. So race results. Lucky race results. <sighs> Yeah, here we go. Our lucky dog friends uh, had their salute to the dogs. Alex Mills Memorial Race at Portland International Raceway. It was presented by Pyrotech in Portland, Oregon this weekend. Hey, Bill, Alan, you guys were there. Why don't y'all take the winners on this one? Uh, okay. So we had three different levels there. Uh, the winner for the Saturday uh, first part of it was number 39, the, the Smart Racing, which is questionable as far as a team name in, involved with uh, amateur endurance racing, but we'll let them have it this time. And they did 228 laps. And on that same lap, they had number 24, which was a blue Bayou car. Uh, both of these cars were extremely fast, and we were passed on our third lap by them. Uh, so so <laughs> that was after Vicky did a reconnaissance, 360-degree uh, view of one of the turns. So 
Uh, that didn't go so well. Well, you have to make um, sure you see all of it. It's, it's, yeah, well, she wanted to make sure because she couldn't get a track walk, so she figured if she just spun on every turn, she'd be able to to do a, a quick yeah. walk around and uh, more time. Yeah, exactly. Smart, she wanted to plan. make sure visual references. She was making yeah. sure it looked the same as the video, right? The video yeah. she watched ahead of time. That yeah. one, right? Yeah, yeah she yeah. was making sure it looked the same as that one. Yeah, well. Um, she had time. Uh, and then Saturday night, they had two enduro sprint races, which were kind of fun. Uh, we heard they were kind of fun. We didn't get to try them. Uh, we had uh, number one was won by the Three Thieves Racing, edging out the uh, Spiral Out Racing by a second and a half. And uh, there was five seconds back was the, the Smart Racing team again. Um, one of the teams that I think would have done really well would have been the, uh, race invaders. Uh, I think they had a problem towards the end and I'm not sure they got out for the Enduros, but that, that car was really fast this weekend as well. There was a lot of really fast cars this weekend, uh, minus our car, which was not, uh, <laughs> the, the second sprint, they saw, uh, the spiral out racing coming in first three seconds ahead of three thieves and, and smart taking third again. So, uh, consistency was there Sunday racing. Uh, was led by Blue Bayou and the Three Thieves Racing in second, with Giant Motorsport coming in third. Third reminds me of uh, a very important number that we'll talk to about Sunday later. Or three, actually, is a number, three. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Turd. Yeah. Hey, so, hey, listeners, if you want to hear your team name and results, tell us that you're actually listening so that we will say something about you, maybe, you know. We talk about teams we know, and there are teams that make us laugh. Maybe you're both. Just tell us how your weekend went. We miss a lot of stuff, obviously. So if there's something we should cover, tell us about it. Email, social media, whatever. We're easy. Are we really? You're, you're pretty easy. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so we've talked a little bit about the Lemons Rally, uh, but now we have the final results, overall winners. And actually, I think these were all of the ones that we had said um, that were happening midway through. I think they stayed. Uh, Test Icicles with their Saab 900, which was truly a terrible car, which is how Lemons Rally rolls. It, it's still, it's still, it's a horrible car. Yeah. God bless those people. We talked about how much like we, we all had Saabs and which Saabs we liked and who had the oldest, but seeing the pictures of that is, is truly epic. Uh, second was our uh, IG favorites, the D-listers, with their non-reverse uh, Fiat X19. Oh, Jensen Healy's Flying Circus was in third. I think they were in first when we reported last. Uh, 24 out of 27 teams that started managed to cover the 2,600 miles. And look for us to have uh, number five host back to tell us some great stories. And uh, But you'll see pictures on uh, all of the social medias, hashtag um, four bangers, bangers, B-A-N-G-O-R-S, banger rally, and hashtag lemons rally. Got some upcoming events. So Bill Strong and the crew from Champ Car, they're going to be racing at the Brickyard this weekend with the TireRack.com Indy Grand Prix. And, folks, it is a proper Champ Car race. 109 cars. Wow. 31. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yep. 31 BMWs. Boring. Boring. 10 Hondas, 16 Miatas, 6 P cars, and one super exclamation point Beetle. That's, that's beyond. Mm-hmm. So there's plenty of good because it's Champ Car. A lot of people take this stuff pretty seriously. Our bank racing and their 94 Integra, they've seen the winner's circle before. Um, Midwest Endurance Racing winners, Land Shark will have their Civic. Uh, other Honda experts, our bank racing, same team there. They have a CRX as well as their Integra. And RFA GFX Ravage FX. Yeah, our RVA that Graphics. Like, they, they're, they're one of the oh. sponsors of the series, RVA Graphics. That's much better than Ravage FX. That seems like some guys who drink way too much Monster <laughs> and, and they think, take themselves too seriously. Uh, they dish their boring E34, a less boring, actually much less boring, Audi V8 Quattro. Well done. Nice to see that. <laughs> so, All right. Alan, I think you're supposed to be the orange. The Adventurous Team Jackie X has both of their Mitsubishi 3000 GTs as well as Tuttle Motorsports and their Mitsubishi Eclipses. No, oh, Bill's the orange mantle. You had to go screw this oh. up. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry, I know. He, he read when he was supposed to. Though. He, he did. Right on. I know. <laughs> yeah. So Alan, just keep going because you're brown. So you Drunken go. Squirrel Racing in their appropriately numbered 302 1988 Mercury Cougar Lemons Veteran, the British Empire Strikes Back, will have their 1977 Triumph TR8 and 
and Mental mentioned the JB Bugs Racing 54 and a 1973 Super Exclamation Point Beetle. Uh, so I get the funny ones. Uh, inspired by a brilliant podcast, there is the good, bad, and ugly in an 84 Camaro. Uh, Camaro, Camaro. America. Uh, we miss seeing Noble Gas Racing in their Dodge Neon drinking team with a racing problem. Not too um, much of a unique thing, but with the, <laughs> if they're actually listed like that on uh, Race Monitor, it's hilarious. Uh, and an 84 Escort. That, that, more man, chum- that's, that's a terrible car as an 84 Escort. Like Those were they terrible in drinking. 1984. They want- are so bad now. <laughs> Yes. It le- hopefully it doesn't have an 84 escort motor and uh, it like know. actually does something better than that more chump than champ is in a boring uh 93 bmw and uh we can't knock that too much it's number 69 nice racing in a prelude and i'm not even going to read the last lines so you can keep going yep what no no we, we, we no. can't not talk about him yep. no we can we uh, cannot on the show i can't no there is no way we could talk about Matt Conley Motorsports. <laughs> <laughs> Even if their name is very uncreative, there is just no way to talk about them on a podcast. Fair enough. Fine. Okay. So the World World Racing lead this weekend is also doing the double tap. So they're going to be at both Brainerd International and Road Atlanta. So for Brainerd, they're going to be at the Comp du Lox race. 25 cars, 10 BMWs, 4 Miatas, 1 Honda, 1 Porsche, and yet another TR7. How? What percentage of remaining TR7s and TR8s have been turned into race cars? Racing. A lot, I guess. Half I don't know them. why so many people do that. But it's not like it's the best car ever to race. Yeah. So they can't. Another... They can't count the TR8. Even when they do, <laughs> they're not any good either. Um, yeah. the, so the Blue Bayou, different Blue Bayou than Lucky Dog is in a Camaro with an E. Uh, they're, you know, it's a Camaro. It's loud. It burns a lot of gas. Sometimes they're fast, and then they blow up. Uh, or racing has got one of those super fancy M two thirty five RSs that we've heard so much about, but don't want to spend a hundred thousand dollars on. Yeah, the Adventurous, which is not much. These are some solid car choices, but there are a few: Rat Patrol and the Triumph TR seven, JMC Motorsports and the Volkswagen Jetta, and virtually worthless VW in a Golf. That's about right. Uh, some more funny ones. Gopher broke. Gopher, like the animal, broke racing in a BMW. Noobman racing in a BMW. Face down racing, or as we call it, keep up with Greg in Atlantic City driving a Supra. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody that laughs has made that mistake. Uh, the big teams are going to be at, at Road Atlanta for the WRL Peachtree Grand Prix. So there are, are 55 cars, 16 BMWs, 16 Miatas, two Hondas, six P cars, and two separate Janetta G55s. And I know I'm mispronouncing that, but uh, none of that matters because my friend Tyler Hoffman and his Miata that he bought off of Cal Denise is going to win everything. All right. Well, then why bother with the rest of this then? (laughs) Next, listener feedback time. Oh, come on. (laughs) Uh, Whatever. Uh, There's some Miatas. There's a Porsche. There, nobody cares. Except Hung North, Trans, Trans Am. Hell yeah, go Trans Am. Nice. <laughs> Don't care about the good cars. They're gonna do fine. <laughs> yeah, they, they might race. Yep. Are we done? And, yeah. Uh, well, okay. Champ Car, the Champ Car team, Biohazards, bringing their uh, MR2, but I think they're going to be outgunned. And then Wendy Knoll is bringing the one Porsche 944 because, as I wrote, nothing says fun like a transmission swap on hot pavement. In July, in Georgia. I've mm-hmm. got two and a half of them if they need them. <laughs> <laughs> You're a little too far away, sadly. I know. Oh, well. Mm. So, listener feedback time. We love so, our listeners. We love the feedback we get. Keep sending it. Hate mail is wonderful. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Brett from BA Auto and Repair and Performance was removing the sound deadening and it actually uh, labeled us. He was doing it the hard way with the wire wheel. And uh. yeah, dry ice, Brett. You, you spread it on there, one hit with a hammer. It's great. But he asked us about our, us and he asked uh, Bill about our least favorite part of building a race car. And I always responded that it's the two and a half weeks of filling all your trash cans with the little plastic bits that you can't resell on eBay. <laughs> We never make it that far. We're still working the other cars out. Mm. Least favorite part, lying upside down in a flannel shirt in July, welding 
the roll yep. cage together. That's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Lotus That's position. Oh yeah. Yeah. Or, or, yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> it's no fun. Eh. Building a car in in the summer, I think, is what I just don't like. It it, just, or the and... winter. And also, <laughs> it, they're or almost the as good as strawberries, which before that one listener who hassled me about eating my gummy bears on air hassles me again. <laughs> I'll just, which, just say. By the way, we laugh at all the time. It's still hilarious. We still joke about that one. Yes. Is he eating? <laughs> um, yeah. Bill's enjoying his strawberries. Now, Bill, I you just got home your, from work. You can enjoy your strawberries. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't getting blamed for the strawberries. That's all. Some poor office is going to get berated again mm, with, I know. is he eating? Yeah. God. <laughs> so, no. m- more feedback. Ted Fort apparently took exception to my dismissal of the Mercedes ML and called me a scallywag while praising the W163, saying they sound great. You can fix them with a hammer as long as it's an E10 hammer and it has the most symmetrical interior in the world. That's very nice. I still maintain. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about the 163 is a solid chassis. Uh, yeah. Ellen, you're uh, a Mercedes yeah. mechanic for a while. Tell us what you think about the 163. Well, I mean, I saw it for sale for like eight hundred dollars. It said it runs and everything, and I was like, mm, it "Doesn't really feel worth it," you know. I mean, I'm not. You know, I will say that when I scavenged parts off an old AC machine that we were throwing in the dumpster, uh, R12, I took one of the hoses, and it turns out it's the same thread fitting as the fuel rail on my service ML. So when you get to the ML with a dead fuel pump, because they all do, uh, you just nose them up, you put the you put the, uh, you know, the rail to rail with my new line that I just made, and then you start your truck, and then if their truck starts, boom, you just diagnose it, and you're off the hook down the road. Get paid. <laughs> thanks for stopping by. Now, wow. that That's right. is a top tip, everybody. Uh, wow. If anybody could actually follow what just happened. Oh, I did. It's was, great. Well, actually, I know yeah, you did. That was fantastic. That was Ted, awesome. Ted Ford's hitting that 15-second uh, backwards. He's like, <laughs> okay, yeah, this is exactly what I'm going to do when mine goes Alan sideways. Alan who? When, uh-huh. when, we, when mine goes sideways, <laughs> uh-huh. I would call Alan. Okay. I, so ahead. we call Chris for Hondas, and we call Alan for Mercedes. Okay, I got. Uh-huh. I'm working on this. I'm not allowed oh, to touch yeah. tools, so I just go shopping. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, and on Facebook, we linked to an article about uh, Pike Speak, and Bra- our friend Bradley Brownell asked us when he's coming back on the show, and I said soon. We'll have him on soon. Absolutely, always good to have Brad around. Okay, you know who else is good to have around. <laughs> There you go. In case Chrissy. you need a little snack, right? A little something Chrissy's, to eat. Chrissy's mom. Something. That's true. She didn't make yeah. it to Portland, and it was notably missed. Yeah. <laughs> she, she, nice. We don't do shipping, like, cookie <laughs> places. I think the last time we brought, like, little bags with us, and I gave them out, but not much. It's okay. It's okay. We we every, we missed all the Three Petal Mafia there. You might get some at Pit oh. Rice, though. Woohoo! Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Cool. All right, okay. so... Does that mean that we're you know, wow, Jeff's not here. And somehow <laughs> twenty eight minutes later, we're at the main topic. How does that I'd like even to point work? out it's and it's actually twenty eight not well, say thirty four minutes after when we were scheduled to start too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We're like on <laughs> this is amazing. Time. Okay. Well, our main topic is talking to our friends, Bill and Alan from Garage Heroes and Training, about their experience with Lucky Dog Racing. If you don't remember, they actually won a free entry to Lucky Dog on this very show where Kathy offered that up and looked for entries. And I think they just so spammed her email box of entries with everyone in their team and everyone's friends and their mm-hmm. gardener and lawyer mm-hmm. and employees and dogs, the family, yeah, pets. Um, yeah, anybody on the street they found. Yeah, I think they got some, hired some homeless people to do it, and whatever. <laughs> it worked. Uh, and, 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 and folks, if you're listening to your car, I need you to all wave at your radio right now because Alan's waving at you. All of our listeners, all twelve of them, Alan's waving at you, and he, you know, it, it's rude if you don't wave back. That's true. So we want to know all true. about it. So start us off. How was your time out there? Uh, I had a super fun time. We ended up 
uh, did read an RV share, I believe it was. So uh, the lovely Vicky was able to line us up with some place to stay out there that was delivered to our location, which happened to be the parking lot right outside of the venue because they don't let you in the front doors until they're ready. We're somewhat familiar with this in past races. Uh, but it was super cool. We were first in line, uh, the two RVs there, and then we had one other guy show up from uh, Tire Dogs with a massive Camaro. Firebird. So we got in there. Firebird? Same yeah. thing. Yeah, it's all, it's we, all America. It's all American. Uh, and it was super fun. We rented a 1992 Honda Civic, I believe, freshly built. Uh, so in the bolt and nut check that uh, Bennett and Liam performed, they did find some loose bolts down underneath, which was I'm glad they did. And it was fun. It was a good time. We did get a little lap or two in for practice. Uh, as per usual, Bill made sure to set it up so I had something to work on first thing in the morning. Uh, mm. So we put a master cylinder in. He just loves me that way. I uh, put a master cylinder in first thing in the morning. I may or may not have hooked up the va- uh, <clears throat> the booster line to the intake manifold. Uh, uh, I, be- I believe to- it's may not. Well, I didn't the first time. I did at the end of the day on Sunday. <laughs> so, um, so my team got to experience what no brake booster was because someone sent me a video about building a car with or without a brake booster. So I'm just pointing the finger back at you, pal. So yeah, let's see. Thanks. We raced. We had super much fun. We got a little bit starstruck, I think, and put the pro in an amateur's car. And then the amateur's car didn't perform like a pro car. No. And then, and then it was no car. So I believe we spun a rod bearing. I didn't actually do the oil test to confirm, but I'm, I'm pretty solid on that one. Um, they, and there then was of, there was lots of gold metal inside that oil tank, though. Mm. Yes, I did. I, it was like I'm on the West Coast. It's almost like I'm in Alaska painting for gold, you know, as I'm swirling around <laughs> the pan, you know. And I was like, ooh, that's a nice one. I'll keep that so for later. It was, it was a B18, the... right? B18. B18 yeah. B1. Then that means it was the number three rod bearing. <laughs> There's a very right good now. chance of that. Tell me right now. Um, yeah. So yeah. we we did the typical search for a motor. There were three possibilities: Facebook Marketplace. I'm not sure what other avenues Bill goes down. I don't ask. I don't want to know. So there were two maybes, one maybe, and then apparently one of the racing teams for the veterans uh, was who he had purchased a second motor from, and he didn't think the bottom end was good. But then it turns out the bottom end was good. Uh, so then we went to his house to get it, which meant it was 20 minutes away and not not hundreds of dollars, which was beautiful. Or and three then, hours away, one way. Or or three hours away, one way. So Bill promptly went over to get that and then was caught outside the track during the sprints because there's no way to get to the infield while the track is hot. Oh, there's no bridge at Portland, really? No, no, bridge, no bridge, no, no tunnel. tunnel. Walking bridge. Walking bridge, but no driving bridge. So you didn't just hook that motor on your back and huff it over the, the bridge? I don't. I don't know Seriously. why it's such a whip about these things. I mean, there was no didn't, head didn't on it. you go to it. college on a scholarship, head. athletic scholarship? Don't you have teenagers? Isn't this what teenagers are for? Is to I, schlep that I, motor yeah. across that bridge, kids. <laughs> or or but be, tell yeah, them. Yeah, they could have come up with a, like, uh, some somebody has something, not like an engine hoist, but like yeah. some kind of dolly. They hear. I say, I say, tell them under oh, no circumstances is that engine to go over that bridge. Do so, not put that engine. That engine needs to stay outside the track under under no circumstances should that engine end up in the infield and then turn your back. So one of the differences between Lemons and Lucky Dog is in the entire paddock area, there was one and only one engine lift available. They don't even bring them. Uh, wow. We we know that we borrowed one, so yeah. I know one exists. The one, the, the one. one. So <laughs> yeah. So thankfully they have like a text chain they set up. So then we luckily got to Kathy, who got to the guy with the interwebs going on there, the social media links, and then they put it out there. And then five minutes later, some guy walks down her thing. Hey, you guys need a hoist? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Down twenty two, you got to hoof, hoof it yourself. I'm like, great, thanks, pal. Hey, so that that's was all right. certainly yeah, very that's exciting. That's what we did. Yeah, I took it and all I'm not the way gonna, from the other side. You know, I just want to come clean here. I definitely was looking way deep inside some other people's trailers to see if there were some uh, hoists in there. I was looking pretty close because, you know, those legs, when they stick up like that, you can't hide them, you know, mm-hmm. just saying. You can't hide so, the legs when they're up. You can't hide the legs when they're up, you know. So <laughs> so more than once, up- who are you and why are you in my bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So let's yeah. see. So we Saturday got a fabulous yeah we got a fabulous donor motor um we had jacob one of our new tech and trainings uh sanding out the cylinder walls 
I told him how to do the cross hatch situation. So he was doing a non directional swirl on the inside of the cylinder walls and on the deck. Uh, so wait, you guys you guys had motor. to build this motor? It wasn't an assembled oh, motor? Yeah. yeah. It wasn't just oh. a motor swap because that would just oh. be like bolting and unbolting. Yeah. You know, motor, it was, motor swaps are easy. We started yeah. to work our way down. <laughs> so <laughs> okay. we had so that was our discussion about the air stud. Okay. So I have to I have to say thank you to my phone a friend. Um, I had that guy who who is the fine uh, Chris Abbott here on the podcast, um, who I called to because I was like, oh my god, um, <laughs> what what am I doing here? So we got the ARP stud swapped over, um, and apparently um, Eric was in the background as I was getting to that third stage torque, cringing. Is he going to stop turning? Is it going to stop? And then I like I just kind of paused on one and went back, did the others, and then later he's like. Yeah, thanks for stopping on that one. I didn't feel good about that. I'm like, okay, well, we're good then. <laughs> uh, so we built the motor. Yeah, we swapped over the head. Uh, I'm sure I rinsed out most of the metal bits with the canner three or brake clean that I used from the head. We got case, that back on. Case, case of brake cleaner. That's, or so. That's so. how you should buy it. You know, Bill, you can always use brake cleaner. I, I emptied two stores and was on my third store when he finally got done. <laughs> you as a ceramist don't oh we don't always need break clean when you're around. Nope. We have clean we have cleaned with number, number four. Three. Yeah. Oh, is it number, three? Number don't go to number four. Number four is nasty. <laughs> you get so four, you got, I, I was gonna mention far. there's a chemical way to get rid of that sound deadening stuff, but we we skipped right by, so I was okay with that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so, yeah, so not only did we do a motor swap, we also had to do the head swap. So we did a head gasket on a B18, B1, whatever it was. Um, we bolted it down in place. Apparently, the bottom end that he had was, you know, just fresh new timing belt. The pulley diameter of the water pump was a slight skosh bigger, which means the belt that I had, both belts I had, were too long. So we had to do a... Uh, water pump swap in the car since we didn't realize this outside of the car because who has different size water pump pulleys? Mm-hmm. Uh, but we did get the car running. We got it bolted in. Honda. Integra. Acura. Oh, oh, we lost him. Alan has crappy internet. Check that one Al- out. Yep, that one's good. <laughs> but his face is funny. Yep. It's al- it's almost like a Citroen trying to give people blocks here for free. Uh-huh. Um, no fair. It's a, it's a lovely sunset though. It froze on you know. Alan lives in a beautiful part of the country. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's yeah. back there now. We so where did we end off there? Was I going? <laughs> uh, you got the timing belt on. Time belt on, and we got three three two and a half laps under power, and then I wanted to come in to check everything out coasting. Yeah, that's want to go too fast through the pits. <laughs> so without gas. We, uh, without, yeah. It was out of gas. It, it must have been out of gas. 24 I thought, and a half I thought hours, we need... and we didn't put gas in. 24 <laughs> and one half hours. So now, an not, engine swap slash engine rebuild. Yeah. Yes. Water pump swap. Yep. Yep. Brake master cylinder change. Yep. Yep. And no one put gas in it. Nope. Well... <laughs> It's a Honda, right? They don't use a lot of gas, right? I mean, that compelling argument. Yeah, it's I mean, only got four cylinders. We ran I mean, two days on one tank of gas. All right, so you did all and this not, work. You tested. Yeah. You, you came back in under coast to make sure it was okay. Yes. You got some yep. gas in it. And then I, I just wanted to um, let everyone else have a chance to sit in the car. No. Yeah, it, <laughs> so, it didn't run. <laughs> so, so we... that, that lithium-ion battery he had there cranks really well, but there was just no fire left in the game. I took, I'd let all the horses out. Is really yes. what happened. <laughs> so in two we, laps. When we came in, <laughs> we, did, we did a temperature test on the cylinders. Uh, three of them were at room temperature, and one of them was warm. Uh, that's a shame. I still got a sub two minute in. What are you talking about? Come on. Got, got that is impressive minutes. with a thumper. Basically, and even yeah. even better than that was in the process, we'd only jacked up the front of the car to do the motor engine head gasket swap. So Bennett was like, hey, should we put the dry tires on? Yeah, put the dry tires on, but no problem. So we had the wets on the back and then the dries <laughs> on the front. So if you thought it was squirrely before, oh, baby, that's right. <laughs> that's right. One step away from nice. cafeteria trays. It was awesome. So who got to drive then? I know Alan got two and a half laps. Vicky started and spun. So, we, okay, she got to drive. Who else got to drive? Everybody who came got to drive on Saturday except me. Oh, so it's a normal weekend. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, good. Yes. <laughs> yes, it was. Good. So, okay. so what I did was I joined the exclusive club 
that you belong to, Chris, of the people who Randy takes a driving stint away from. Uh huh. And then you never so, get to drive again. And then you don't get to drive. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. It's okay. It was fun. Uh-huh. We had a good time. So I Not for no nothing, but my lap times were dropping a second a lap. A second a lap. Three laps in a row. Boom, boom, boom. At, you know, I, I had no idea this because there was no in car telemetry or anything because no one knows how to do that. Um, second lap, I was like, hey, why don't you come in and give Randy a seat? Oh, okay. All right. I'll, uh, I'll come in then. Sure. No problem. Whatever. You're not bitter at all. All right. Not well, at all. So, yeah, what, phrases never to say over the radio, or if you hear them over the radio, ignore. Hey, why don't yeah. you come in? Randy wants a seat. Uh, uh you did. Yeah, uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, uh, Negative ghost rider no, pattern. Uh, yeah, no. Nope. Yeah. Well, then you no. can just use, the, on? The, use on? the Rhode Island wave as you go by the pits when everyone's staring at you. <laughs> That's uh. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> uh, I thought that was Jersey communication. So uh, okay, very close. So, uh, what did you think about Lucky Dog in general? It's your first time in an experience with a league not lemons, different mm-hmm. different coast. What do you think? Uh, I think it was a blast. It definitely was a lot of fun. There was a little bit less of the let's say carnival atmosphere that that uh, we come to know and love. Uh, the the people were so friendly. Uh, the it was I would say a little step up in technology equipment that kind of thing i walked in one guy's trailer i'm like hey uh what race is that from he's like it's live i'm like oh okay you've got live video of your car right now and like pictures of it going around the track like five screens five Five. yeah some of them did have yeah this was inside the trailer i think it was more like a curved two screener but i'm not trying to you know whatever it's not the uh yeah but it was really cool there was i think at least two or three of the uh veterans uh cars there that was a lot of fun um all right, it was a little little concerning, that end of race uh, tradition of going to the wall. Uh, apparently, totally when, I sent my, yeah. when I sent my son and Liam over there to the wall and they sent a video home to mom, I heard about it later, apparently. Uh, oops, sorry. Not sorry. Um, There's no, and a couple of there that's got a wing that's like three inches wider on each oh, side. Oh, no. Yeah. Fairly. And they, and they like rubbing their... Uh, rear view mirrors on the side wall of the pit. Oh no. And and Kathy the, like <laughs> the, the dirt. amount of dirt. The stuff it gets right in your face. Like well I went over there because I just did it what everybody else did was doing and I was like, this is terrible. And f- dirt everywhere. Yeah. Bad. Hmm. Well the good news is they slowed down to one thirty, so that you know that was good. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> did they okay. did they have a party? They, uh, the biggest notable difference, I mean, there's lots of little changes, but the biggest notable difference is while we were up Saturday night, like working on our car, okay. there was crickets. There's nothing going on. It's like really? eight o'clock and people oh. are out cold sleeping oh. or, or watching we were their telemetry. And we were yeah. the only people working on our car. Well, Kathy had the tequila party that night. We were there. So everyone was up and having a great time. <laughs> We were because still doing motor swaps, but free we tequila were... shots while we were motor swapping. Yeah, we uh, we had the a uh, dinner uh, earlier, but basically when the sun went down, everybody went to sleep. Well, almost everybody, not us. So we uh, we had a long night. It was fun. Okay, but um, Lucky Dog was great. I think that the 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 differences between them are not dramatic. I think they're probably uh, at least B car, A car type cars. And they the the thing is they don't have a money spending limit, so there's some serious hardware both on the track and behind the wall of the track that that you just don't see at Lucky Dog, I mean at uh, Lemons. So um, I think the the expectation is that their cars will run and they will run quickly. And if they break, they don't they don't fix them. Um, you know they just say okay, we're done for the weekend. And you know there was a couple teams out there that did some significant fixes and repairs and and things, but it was more of a prepare it, bring it, take it home, prepare it for the next uh, type of series than, than what we usually do, which is, uh, you know, use used parts whenever possible. And, you know, you know, try and try and uh, pay homage to the, uh, the jankiness of what we're supposed to be doing as opposed <laughs> so, to, you know, two a, frame cars and uh, things like that. That's quite so. a concept. Come to the track with the car ready. Huh. Yeah, it's like I've it's heard, like editing. I in snow. I've heard these terms, but I just can't wrap my head around them. No, I used to come to the track with a car ready. I used to have the car ready like a week in, in advance, on the trailer, ready to go. Saying, "Jeff, you done with the boat yet? That ready?" <laughs> and show up Friday with a list of stuff. 
Yeah. In, in your defense, though, a lot of a lot of getting the car ready was just put gas in it from the last race, and okay, we're good. Change it's it ready. Oil. Give it a check. Make sure it's all right. Yeah. yeah. That was yeah. those are the nice days. I missed them. I decided to go faster, and now everything breaks. Uh-huh. What, what fun is that, though? Then you're uh, then you're just sitting there watching cars go round and round. I it's mean, fun to watch other people fix their cars. But uh, yeah. all right, so we we know what broke. We know what you thought about. Well, we, Alan, what do you think about Lucky Dog? We heard what Bill thought. What do you think? I think I think it was a lot of fun. I definitely enjoyed right at the end, uh, just checking out all the you know the dog trophies, um, similar to the you know the metal crafted welded you know pressure plate trophy kind of stuff that was really neat uh i think that uh as, as an organization it was pretty fun they definitely had the right atmosphere i think it was uh just the you know the the pre-race uh, drivers meetings that sort of thing uh you know he added some penalties on sunday because some people weren't listening so clearly on saturday uh or just increased the penalty time as it were but I, I think it was a lot of fun it was a blast it was interesting i was actually talking to bennett about this uh, yesterday or today uh, my son bennett who also raced he's uh, 17 he said there was a lot more times where you could take a line you wanted around a turn because there weren't other cars with you. So there'd be two or three turns where, hey, you're just going the line where you think you'd want to go rather than, uh, holy crap, what's this car coming up behind me? Um, and, and, you know, that sort of thing. So it was it was definitely interesting. Um, I, you know, I think the only difference, like we saw blue flags and maybe they throw blue flags at us and lemons. I don't know. Um, we but, saw a lot uh, of those flags. Yeah. One, one of our drivers was less than happy about seeing the, blue flags. The Swedish diving oh, flag? Oh. Yes. Yes. I I tried to explain to him that he was adopted and this was really his family crest. But I don't know. <laughs> We're thinking about painting our new car with that. And then having everybody just let us pass. They'll just see it and let us go. Uh, I don't think that's how that's, it works. That's actually, no, that's just a, this is a great theme. And well, start, st- start calling it the, the Git battle flag. See, we tried nice. putting, we tried have flying a yellow flag off the back of the boat, or Jeff did once. And <laughs> somehow, that wasn't intentional, was it? No, no. Jeff oh. just put a flag out there. I think it's, it said, like, no bacon or something like that. Whatever I don't know it was. <laughs> but whatever Jeff put on there. And then, uh, you know, after about five laps, they, they said, yeah, you guys got to take that down. <laughs> Everyone can't pass it or yellow. They're getting all confused. It's terrible. So <laughs> don't do that. Bastards. Uh-huh. Uh, all right. So I think as far as that goes, the track, I think the track was a lot of fun. I definitely started to get a groove in it. Uh, I think there were definitely some spots to pass. There were some tighter sections. Uh, I, I definitely enjoyed it. I think that with, you know, twice as many cars in there, it would have been a little more hectic. Uh, but I definitely did enjoy the track. The one downside being that whole no crossing track when it's hot. Uh, that required a bit of timing uh, on our part. But other than that, uh, no, I, I think the Lucky Dog and the, the track, it was definitely a lot of fun. Uh, as far as the vehicle, the front-wheel drive chassis, as it were, uh, I did enjoy it. Uh, thankfully, I went out third, so I heard both prior drivers come in very early. Uh, complaining of, I can't drive this thing. Oh, my God, I spun. This one spun. So I was like, all right, maybe it's a little switchy. You know? And I'm like, okay. Oh, hey, this is nice. All right, good deal. So um, Loose is I like fast. it. Loose is fast. And, and I, you know, I like oh, the concept. I thought of you said the, this is fast. I was going to say new. No, loose is fast. On those. Loose is fast, maybe. Um, yes. on, on a note to civics, you know, I, I've got a friend's accord at the house, and I need to take the power steering belt off. And I, I rummaged through his trunk, and he had like two wrenches there, and that was all I needed to take the power steering belt off. So in that sense, yeah, I like Hondas. I, it's nice and easy, simple. <laughs> um, that's, that's the way to go. Cheating on the Capri, I hear. Cheating nah, on the Capri. It's not, not che- no, we're not exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> we're on a break. Hey, uh, the Capri looks like she so, gets around, you know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the Capri's got yeah, a, the, the, the yeah exactly. The Capri's gotten a lot of late night text. You up? <laughs> And the answer is only be no. <laughs> so the uh, I think the location of the airport to the track was super fabulous. It was like under thirty minutes, like twenty five minutes. So that was very convenient as far as getting out and in and out. Uh, my usual runs back and forth to find Walmart and parts stores, uh, clean hot showers went very well. So in that sense, it was pretty. Neat. It was in, in a strange little industrial area of Portland. Uh, so we got to see some, uh, let's see, boat prop manufacturing places and a couple other things I hadn't quite seen before. And an auction, and we did not buy anything at the auction, thankfully. There was four ballets within a half a mile of the track. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Not that not that kind of ballet. The yes. other kind. 
Okay. Yes. Mental, men, mental season. He's got it. All right. Okay. Folk dancing. Yes. 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 Fantastic. Well, that means you're in a good neighborhood, which is always th- where you want to be. So somewhere between boats and. I think the track's kind of flat. Dancing. Boats and, and hoes. More, more like New Jersey. <laughs> if you were to say something. <laughs> Sorry. That's not how I I know Portland. Was boats and hoes? No. <laughs> boats and hoes. No, we we quite like Portland over there. It just seems like a very nice town. I don't know how much chance you guys got to get out and actually see Portland. Well, Bill got to visit all the auto parts stores, so that's Absolutely. always nice. Yeah. yeah, I had a lovely um, – was it Saturday afternoon? When was it? Friday? I forget. Uh, we went and hit some artsy district and did some walking around with the ladies. That was uh, quite a bit of fun. Got to see some local flavor, if you will. Uh, right. So it was definitely pretty cool. We got right. out of, We got out a few times. We were only fixing a car for like 24 hours of the five days we were there. So Yeah, um, it's not bad. They did pass a local ordinance where people are allowed to live on public land as long as they move the next day. So there's um, a lot of uh, temporary tent shelters uh-huh. around the city, which is not what I remember from Portland. But um, we'll see how long that lasts. Well, they have to be very nice because it's Portland. And so you yes. know, they can't they can't just run the homeless out. So yes. they, they got to do something. Yeah. They uh they'll all come down here for the winter and then they'll they'll you know they 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 summer up north and then yeah come back here. It's quite a hike, dude. Well, what else are they doing? <laughs> I guess nothing. <laughs> Who wants to walk that far? What else yeah, are they, they doing? Got a, they got a lot of time when you don't work. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I must say I, I've seen quite a few cars in my day and there are a couple fairly janky repairs that I I think uh, Jeff would be proud of. I saw one that almost mm. looked like racing stripes up the hood. Um, and they were, you know, the neon color and I was like, wow, that's cool. And I was like, oh no, those are ratchet straps. Oh, okay. So I start to walk over like, geez, maybe I should get a picture and they go to crank it. I'm like, oh wow, this is embarrassing. I'm not going to just start taking pictures of this guy's really freaky car. Cause yeah, a few, a few more broken down levels of cars than I've seen before. I think you've never held your hood down with ratchet straps. Wow. I personally don't hold my hood down. I just, they were like <laughs> that's parallel true, yep. and, you know. <laughs> See, I was going to say, if you're going to get those uh, the hood pins, they have the ones that automatically catch. I would recommend those. You know, <laughs> I have no idea you. why. Uh huh. <laughs> just it's it's a good investment, you know. I'm thinking. Yeah, but I know it. somebody who knows how to fix a windshield. So why not just well, test those I also, again? I also know someone who has the auto latching hood pins, and when they rear-ended somebody, the pins were no longer attached to anything, and then the hood flipped uh, up. So yeah. That yeah. did. That is. That yeah. Uh-huh. That happened. So that's why I like these solid, giant spike o metal with other spike o metal through it. It's <laughs> likely to stay closed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I just don't like driving behind these these a uh, metal screen. That was no fun. Yeah. All right. So, Bill, did you get to see the track at all? Testing day? Anything? Or do you have any, any um, thoughts on the track it, or the the local area? There's some there's some gray parts, and on the outside there are some white parts. Okay. And, and there's stores all nearby. <laughs> okay, good. What is your favorite auto parts store near Portland, Grace Ray? What was that place? It was Baxter? What was that, Alan? Do you remember? Yeah, that was the local one. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't actually go to the store. I was actually working. But yes, yes. Baxter, I believe, was the local Okay. So shout out Baxter. to Baxter's Auto Parts, Bill's Baxter's favorite Baxter's store. Other part in Portland, yeah. Oregon. There's, Lucky Dog approved. There's a Walmart, uh, Lowe's, a Home Depot, an auto supply store flaps, as you would say, and uh, five junkyards within four miles of the track. That sounds great. You can do anything there. And I some single mom dancers. So, yeah, exactly. there you go. We do like the Civic, though. We, we're thinking we're thinking maybe adding a, uh, a front-wheel drive to the portfolio. Well, if you wanted a Civic, I have, not getting 10 years <laughs> worth of Civic parts in the basement yeah. that I don't know what to do with. I, I don't know if we could always use them. Hmm. Um, well, if you had a car that they would go into, you could. Yeah. Mm. Like, really, I have so much stuff. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> so I was initially shaking my head because I I have an idea. I don't even know how many cars you guys own. Um, and so I would think... We're selling another... two. We're selling two. Two and three quarters we're selling. Great. The, the, the Porsches? That's... Yes. That yes. still means you still have a lot. Um, and But we really have a lot of parts to, to give away. So I'd really just be happy to get... Yeah, just get one. Seriously, we like have- if you get if you get a, an '88 to 2000 Civic, I've got the whole drive line. 
and all kinds of weird stuff and all kinds of custom stuff. And I can, I can even tell you what the reliable setup is, not the one we were using at the end. That was the fast and blowy uppy setup. But I can give you the <laughs> the quick enough and really reliable and burns no gas and keeps driving and is friendly setup. That would we need the re- we need the round and round setup. Yeah, that's what we like need. the the twenty thousand <laughs> miles on a race setup. Yeah, I've got that. Yeah, that's the one. The that's, Honda yeah. Tape R setup. Yeah, we got that. I just. And I don't know what to do with it. So if you guys really want to go that way, tell me. We're going that way. We're going okay. that way. Great. As long as I get rid of my two and three quarter 944s. Great. I've got over 2,000 2000 Porsches, according to that math. But um, uh-huh. but we're, we're thinking. <laughs> Good. Fantastic. <laughs> nice. Uh, and uh, so overall, like, we'll wrap it up. What joys and concerns with your whole Lucky Dog Portland experience? What do you yeah. got? I'll go. So I think the um, the joys were just you know a fun atmosphere. Uh, I did like the concept of the racy uh, the two sprints in the evening. Uh, seemed like a lot of fun. Just to like you know you're there racing. You want to do a little extra? Here, here's a little extra. So go how long were those? Curious. Forty five minutes. minutes. Oh, okay. Were they forty five? Thirty. Okay. I thought they were forty five. Yeah, two forty five minute sprints. Theoretically, with a ten minute break in between to drive a truck through with a motor in the back, but that did not happen. Because so, they. Because they pitted, you know how they grid in the in uh, parallel grid. Yeah. So instead of taking the ten minutes to do any gas things or anything, they just gridded across where the crossway was. Oh, so okay. They, so they, you know, they basically they, ran the track. They could sad. have been thirty feet back either way. It would have yeah. been fine. But they whatever. just need a bridge and or uh, tunnel. Really is what it yeah, comes down to. Exactly. Okay. But the track uh, no. owned by the city, so the odds on that happening are zero. Really. Yeah. But still cool that the city the owns city. a track you know that's yep. nice mm-hmm. and it's, right. it's well, right in it's in the city ish so you don't have to travel like most of ours yeah. are out in the middle of nowhere yeah and there literally was a train station right outside the exit too yeah um, that's pretty I think, crazy i think for us it was a challenge going across country to pull off a race uh, i know there's lots of prep and planning on our end i uh, we still not have a race equipment back it's it's somewhere traveling across the country um, well, it's in a safe location. Though, it, right? Yeah, we know where it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, it's in Bend, no Oregon, at the last known blockbuster in the world. Nice. Still nice. good. Well, one, they're on their way. Yeah. So no, I, I think it was a lot of fun. I think the um, you there's know, there's two I, blockbusters. I, there's one in Alaska too. It's got um, I think that piece from Russell Crowe. Oh, oh bummer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, no, I, I think it was a lot of fun. I think it was very similar to what we, we do in Lemons, uh, just to get your eyes out there, have fun, do some racing. Um, you know, the one the one trailer that was next to us, the Tire Dogs, you know, I was talking to them a bit. Um, and, you know, when they blew up their transmission, they had to go get the whatever, the Spicer, I don't know, $2,500 unit to put back in. And then they broke their panhard rod. So I was like, all right, this, these guys have got some some uh, some hardware going on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was that was interesting, um, but no, I, I think the the racing was good. the 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 event was good. We we definitely had a blast. Uh, Kathy definitely puts on a party of fun atmosphere. So I would highly recommend it to anyone that wants to get out there and uh, have some fun and race a car. So the the d bag factor, you know, uh, lemons tends to be extremely effective at weeding out d bags, and it depends on what series you go to. There tends to be some more, some less, because it comes down to sometimes how seriously they're taking themselves. So on a scale of BMW CCA weekend d baggery to lemons d baggery being one and BMW being ten, where would you put Lucky Dog? Uh, yeah, you know, I, the, uh, we're going back to pit race where we were, our pit stall was right next to the judges. So we were in pit stall one because the guy we rented the car from is the safety marshal, Eric. Uh, I don't know exactly what his role is, but director of operations. Yeah. So he was at the end of pit lane. So he put his car in pit lane one. So then we got to see everybody. So, you know, as I'm wrenching on the car, I don't even know what I was doing. I just, it was just funny. The watching the guy argue about like listen put the stickers on the side of the car or you're going behind the wall <laughs> i was just like oh all right well i guess you know and that was nice at pittsburgh because i got to hear all the stuff like okay so what do you think happened <laughs> so that was uh what do you got I, I think the i think the the population has a spectrum and i think a lot of the people are similar in in enthusiasm and uh, skill and interest in racing as as the typical lemons crowd there is there is a uh, somewhat smaller 
very small, I would say, uh, some of the tip of the spear people who may have the uh, non-desired attitude and, you know, a pass is complete when you can see that I'm next to you kind of thing. So, <laughs> um, and then, then thou shalt give me my raceway. Uh, so, but I don't think there's many of those. And I think the, the speed creep apparently is, is getting to this series. Um, but I think Kathy's, Kathy's trying to um, make sure it doesn't get crazy. Yeah, Kathy seems to be very cognizant of that and trying to stay on top of it the best she can. Yeah. I mean, and the, the nice thing is that some of the some of the teams that are are um, increasing their weapons of war, uh, they tend to break as well. So um, mm-hmm. they're not they're not doing that, it quite that, well. No, that never, never happens. happens. Never. Uh-uh. That's just well, ridiculous. LS swap, baby. LS swap. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so no, it was kind of cool seeing a lot of people uh, as I was hunting around most of the the weekend looking for parts, tools, whatever it was. Uh, it was nice to see a lot of people like like. Sur- surprise look on their face clapping and stuff when they did see the civic finally rolling again so that was kind of cool nice. um but no definitely a good weekend yep okay I, I think on the concern side of the world the pit uh protocols being very different from lemons is a little concerning to me in, in that you can be wearing shorts against the wall while people are gassing just the other side of the wall which mm-hmm. just seems weird seems a little weird plus you know there's, there's a wall covering your legs <laughs> yeah pretty much pretty much if there's a fire you run away yeah pretty much yeah so just duh. That's or not it's, duck duck it's, behind the wall it's just a little close i understand how they can do it because they have such a small field and they're able to actually assign pit stalls and you can actually set up base camp there and, and everything but it just seems a little questionable i guess um that would be the i only don't concern. disagree i was just i was just <laughs> but I mean, as far as as far as the series goes, you know, we definitely would do it again. It's it's fun. Um, the tricky part for us is we have a team of you know seventy percent students and teachers, so we have a two month window in which we can go there because logistics could be difficult. Um, but uh, we're we're gonna try it again. We'd always do one travel trip, and it may be out there again. Mexico. Cool. Mexico a, could be. And I will say, we definitely right? represented Lemons well by uh, jamming and cramming to get that, that car up and running again. I was just so happy to actually get it back on track again. So that was uh, super awesome. And I know Bill was able to corner uh, the pro driver in the RV for a bit there for a podcast, so he was pretty excited, too. We did. Whoa. Even, after, even yes. after he blew up your car. Well, that's probably why he we, felt bad. Aww. We yeah. had... Oh, so yeah, that's, that's a bit of an that. exclusive. You've got an upcoming episode that, yep. yes. folks, if you don't already, and we know most of you do anyway, because the Venn diagram of Garage Heroes and Trainings overlays exactly over the E1R listeners. You guys uh, listen up, because they're going to have Randy the Seat Thief uh, on their uh, <laughs> on their show. He, he, he really is. I mean, as good of a driver as everybody probably thinks he is, he is a better person. He actually did feel really, really bad. And, uh, I don't think he was going to come on our podcast if he didn't have the issue. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, no uh, one's ever said a bad word about Randy as a person. He's very nice. No, he's very Absolutely. nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Unless you're in a seat that he wants to sit in. And uh-huh. then, yeah. And then he goes to another seat after you blow it up. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. got to go race that car now. <laughs> Listen, All I right. didn't happen to run into him in the, in the airport on the way out. And I, I just, I didn't throw him a left or right. And we just said, hello. So we got the car racing again. So I, you know, I was good. For two laps and then it blowed up. You know, we had a whole we had a whole bunch of more on that first lap. Well, all right. So, so let's just say that in the three laps that I did race, I averaged over five passes a lap. So I'm just saying, 16 positions in three laps. Do the math, people. Okay, it was like turn. Passes. You would have won twice. You would have gotten first and third, according to my math. So, yeah. Pretty much. See, yeah. Yes. It's funny you yeah. should mention that. So I had 200 stickers with me when I went out there. <laughs> so one of our theories was on Saturday night when we were out fixing our car and everybody else was asleep, I was thinking we put a sticker on every single car. And then Sunday, we finished first, second, third. Oh, everything. that's cute. All of them. <laughs> All of them. I love watching Alan talk in the dark because the light is from the bottom of it. <laughs> That's hilarious. And, and when he got around to the side of the car to let her out, 
he saw the hook hanging in the window. The only thing better would be if Jeff came walking up from behind. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm camping in your yard, Alan. All right. <laughs> oh, man. So, okay. uh, keeping with our ASMR theme, uh, we've moved on to On the Spot. It's On the Spot, and this week's On the Spot is special guest, Bill. Bill, you've got an On the Spot with a listener question. I have a listener question, that, a listener that I know very well. He uh, He's going to a NASA HPDE in two weeks, not this weekend, but next weekend, and uh he, he's got a selection of cars that he needs to choose from, so we'll we'll talk about that later. I'll speak for him. But what should should you expect Not and bring? The Capri. Yeah, well, obviously, I don't want to push it. I mean, he doesn't want to push it around the track because that wouldn't be good. Uh, also not legal, but that's yeah. fine, too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hooking, a rope, to, hooking a rope to Alan life. doesn't count as a motor. <laughs> no, no. That's so one Alan why, is, why is yeah, why is Alan doing this? They have teenagers. Get get some of those like, you know, harnesses on there, you know, chest harnesses that you use for wayward toddlers, and then you just do that. Give them a you know, and then the teenagers. Yeah, exactly. Teenagers pull. One pole, a piece of string, and some shiny tinfoil, and Alan will bust any record on any track. <laughs> <laughs> just That's hang it way. out there and whoosh. So I guess what to, what should we bring? What should uh we expect at there. Um, okay. Well, uh, how many of you guys are coming? It was six. It's now two. Okay. Makes it easy. So two. then you just need two cars that have passenger seats and decent brakes and tires to get around okay. the track. Do we need tools? Do we need the trailer? Do we need... Depends on the cars you're bringing. If you're bringing well, modern, cars. reliable cars, then bring basic tools. You know okay. enough enough that if you had a a brake pad go wrong, you could you know get some get some quick do a quick pad change, um, things like that. You know unless you had friends who were bringing their enclosed trailer and entire setup with their race car because they need it because their race car is wacky. You know then you don't need much. Just saying. <laughs> but uh, okay. okay, so so here's here's Liam's gonna probably bring his eighty six. Okay. Okay. So we've got the Miata that we got uh, mm-hmm. from uh, recommended by one of our friends. Mm-hmm. Always, How, always an excellent choice. Uh, it's a turbo too. Even. It's a turbo Miata. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, the problem with that is, I have an exceptionally. Oh, our, the listener has an exceptionally large melon, which then requires a double XL helmet. So he ends up looking like uh, Afro well, Man. <laughs> well, yeah, and it doesn't fit. I don't think yeah. I'll pass the broomstick test. Uh, he'll pass the broomstick test. So okay. looking for a backup, the Mini Cooper. Buy a, front, buy a front Miata front. hardtop. I have a Miata hardtop. Does that count? If if you're in the car with the hardtop on, they don't see it and they don't do the broomstick test. Pretty much. Can't do a broomstick test. It's, it's that meme. Can't do a broomstick test if there's a roof in the way. Mm. Can you run without the roof on if it's nice, though? No, I wouldn't because then that's the broomstick test. Then it's going to attract attention to if your helmet is six above the roof. So uh, just run with the windows down. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that, the mean the Miata, from what I recall of of that, is is set up for the track already and should be a riot out there. Yeah. So yeah, I was just out. worried about the broomstick because the, the the mini is just a pushing beast. We took it to the hooked on driving. Yeah. And it would just push, and I don't want to do that. Yeah. How about the two forty? Is that around? 240. Oh, that could be around. I could get it. I mean, I, I the Miata or the 240 seem like your best choices. Um, it's also the the other anytime you're in an HPDE, you have to say to yourself, "Am I willing to take the risk of crashing this thing on track?" Yeah. You know? And that's a, that's a risk risk decision you get to make for yourself. Pit race has a lot of runoff room, but it's always yeah. still possible. Um, like when I ran See, the I NSX the there, I thought forty was too fast. Well, they're all too fast, really. But you know, like the Miata's fast with the you know, especially with the you know, with the turbo on it, you can turn the boost down a little bit and probably learn a little bit more. Um, so, so there's another option. There's a 2019 Miata, but it doesn't have a roll bar. It just has what it came with. Uh, I don't think that works. No, sorry. 
So, so to be clear, you're looking to buy another car. No. Someone got that already. Okay. <laughs> this was a listener question. What, is this it, was a listener question, right? A listener not... perhaps has one nearby. Yeah. If it if it were a, a, a Miata RF that had the the roof on it. Oh yeah. Then you're yeah. fine. Just leave the roof on it. Didn't fit. Okay. Then nah. no. The other Miata needs a roll bar, and you're pretty much not going to get one in anytime soon. From what I've seen. Nope. Not so, one worth having. Nope, absolutely not. So um, I think the uh, the old Turbo Miata or the 240 are the right choice. But I pro- of those, I'd probably go with the Turbo Miata with the hardtop on it. And okay. um, to make sure you got you know enough tires to last for, like, if you if you would say that they would easily last most of a day in lemons, then they're good enough. Okay. And so right. brakes, you... like enough brakes, um, fresh brake fluid is very important. You don't want to boil your brake fluid because it's okay. Say, say like some other listener did at NOLA in a Boxster and then turned around and did it again at A&P. Right. Bad. I heard yeah. they had a really good experience, that listener. It was really ex- exciting and stuff. <laughs> uh-huh. Anytime you lose your brakes, it's always exciting. You go, wee that first pump that's great I, it could be my first day at pittsburgh where i don't catch my brakes on fire so we're looking forward to that potentially yep oh that's um, exciting i don't know where you're planning on staying that was what i was just gonna say that's your next thing to think about uh, i think the rest of us are staying at the track in our enclosed trailers or suburbans or whatever because we can um i have a 18 year old who's apparently entered his whiny phase so that's not likely okay all right, so then you got that. That takes so care. he'll be staying at the track, and you'll be at the Hyatt. I hope so. The, um, I don't think so. There is a a massive food event Saturday night that the okay. NASA puts BBQ? on for everybody, so you don't need much there. Um, you need to wear long long pants of some sort are a requirement. Usually, they will waive the long sleeve shirt requirement when it gets really hot, so mm-hmm. you'll probably be okay there. Um, Make sure your helmet is up to, you know, you got your, your good helmet, You're not, not mm-hmm. a crappy one, so just bring your normal race helmet. Right. Um, plenty plenty to drink and a cooler always is important. Uh, right. a, a watch or some way you can check time frequently because you're going Constantly. to need to be checking time all the time. Um, what I usually do is take the schedule for the weekend when they send it out in a PDF. I take a screenshot of it and I set that as the backdrop on my phone. So as soon as I pick it up, I get to see the schedule and the time at the same time to know where I'm supposed right. to be. Because you're going to look at it 8,500 right. times. Um, also, yes. make sure that there's like you clean all the stuff out of the car. Yep. Full tanks of gas to start the day. Um, make sure the passenger seat and belts are just as good as the driver, especially because I'm expecting to be sitting there. So I want to make sure that... Uh, <laughs> It's like, yep, I've got you've got a rope, Chris. All right, tie it on, tie it on tight. It's not yeah. really a rope; it's an electrical cord. But okay, <laughs> if you loop it twice, it's a surgeon's knot. It doesn't come loose. So yeah, exactly. Fine. fine. Yep. Uh, says so it. Have I have I answered your questions? Yeah, the listeners, friends. The, yeah. the... Sorry. Yes, his your friends' questions. My friends' questions. Yes. M- mental. Anything to add? Well, and I've got a follow on question and maybe even put this out to a larger audience. So early on when I was doing this kind of stuff, I just would show up with my helmet. And then as I started going to wheel to wheel, I actually would wear my gloves just to kind of get used to the feel of having manipulating stuff with my gloves, my racing gloves on, even, you know, just a regular T-shirt, but just uh, having that extra mass. And lately I've gotten lazy and I just don't bring them anymore. What, does anybody else here have thoughts about do you do you wear your gloves for HBDE, especially if you know you're going wheel to wheel? I do usually, yeah, because mm-hmm. I'm just kind of used well. to driving. Like that, that's almost all my track time is with the gloves on. So. And it's like not hard to do. It's just like you're sitting there getting ready, you put your helmet on, you get your put your it gloves on. Gives you a little like... more grip too if your hands sweat a little bit. You know when you're in a hot car on the track, exerting yourself a little bit. So, Bill, what do you think? So, so I was doing my usual, you know, trying to learn everything I possibly can because, you know, I'm in training. Yeah. And um, it mentioned that the gloves were made for the Swedish type wheels. So you should have the, the slicker glove for the Swedish wheel and the suede glove for the smoother wheel. Or is that guy just 
internet talking out of his buttocks. Well, I mean, he's not wrong, but is that really what's making you not go fast? Oh no, I do that myself. I was just wondering yeah, okay. if you needed a different glove for a no. different wheel. You're fine because you shouldn't. You shouldn't be shuffle steering anyway. Yeah, you're fine. No, it was a it was a grip texture yeah. thing. No, you're good enough. And like as long as you don't have you know Teflon on on the palms of your gloves, you're fine. I'm sure you can come up with some get kind of Get a little football, but yeah, football stick them like they use in the, you know, NFL. If only we knew someone who was good with chemicals who could come up with something <laughs> to do that. I don't know. We can, we, can, we can make something happen for you. Um, if anything, also, you can go back, and quite a long time ago, we did an entire show with J.G. Passerjack of Grassroots Motorsports about going to an HPDE. And we talked about all these subjects, including picking a car, what to bring, what to expect you to get there, what to do, et cetera. So just saying. You know. Well, you, you know what I was going to do is I was going to watch this video that this group did where they were at the – I think it yeah. might have been even at Pittsburgh. And it's on – a YouTube channel for I think it's Everyone Racers or somebody like that, and, <laughs> and there's these two people that have like almost the same name, and they they cover exactly that. Uh-huh. So we were gonna, we were going to watch that, and I think well, that's a great idea. A, an excellent idea. excellent way to prepare for an HPDE. If in, would... in fact, in fact, you should encourage everyone you know to subscribe to that channel and maybe leave that video playing in the background. You know. Like if it was monetized or something. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, I've, I've, I believe I've subscribed to it. I believe Garage Heroes has subscribed to it. I believe. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Much like yes. uh, our Lucky Dog Free Race, we have subscribed to your channel. Don't Excellent. Worry. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. We're talking. We're, this is, you're not our target market. Okay. I mean, I guess you are, but. <laughs> Yeah, they kind yeah. of are exactly our target market. Uh, okay, yeah, perfect. exactly. No, yeah. Like, that, <laughs> they are the no. definition right. of our demographic. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. We're ready. Anything ready? else? No, I think we'll be good, and we'll hopefully we'll see you out there in uh, two weeks. Yeah, that's the plan. We'll be there. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Is the Honda coming? Or Yes. Is it's the coming. Honda ready? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why? When has that ever stopped us? I mean, I'll be f- finishing it and putting it on the trailer Thursday night, probably at this point. But you know, <laughs> that's all right. No worries. We'll see you there Friday. Yep. Or next week. Maybe we'll maybe we'll do dinner. So, well, we're going to be there at like eleven. But either way, <laughs> then then the, <laughs> maybe, then the maybe has become a no. Exactly. Right. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk. That's great. All right. Cool. All right. Thanks for being on our show, guys. Yeah. Seriously. Thank you. This, this was, was awesome. Fun. Thanks it for telling us about nice. Lucky Dog because you know we we had a good experience there. It's always nice to hear other people, especially it's your first travel really experience there, your first non lemons experience with an endurance race. So all good things. Jeff sent over a message while we were out there. He's like, "So the podcast curse continues because apparently if you take a podcast team, throw them out to the West Coast, their car will blow up on Saturday, and then they will work all day to maybe not race on Sunday." Well, so. We're we're two for two now. <laughs> So, two for two. Uh huh. Yeah. We'll, see what we can do. well done. Thank you for continuing the streak. <laughs> Mental right. had the opportunity to come out. We were we were thinking you were going to come right up till the end. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be married if I'd tried that. <laughs> well, I have a Vicky. You have a Vicky. I understand. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. All right. I think that means we're wrapped up. What are we doing next week? I don't know. Ah. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll figure it out. How hard we, is it? We're, 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 learning, we're learning not to do that because then I just end up opening the show with, sorry, I thought we were going to talk about this thing, but, you know, we had an earthquake. So we I might, don't know. We might do section two of going faster. This is a compelling argument just in time for yeah. your upcoming NASA high performance driving yeah. education weekend. I think it's time I to would, talk I about it. I would accelerate. like a nice, nice long episode for a, like a four-hour trip to Pittsburgh. That would we're be awesome. Doing, we're not doing four-hour. <laughs> you can listen to the JG Pastor Jack one, and then you can listen to because really it's a bonus episode. You're getting two this week, yeah. so that's that's there you go. Or you guys should have this guy on, this Christian Ward guy. He can go on for hours. Just have him as a guest. <sighs> Man, yeah. Yeah. man, can that guy spin yeah. a yarn? That's for sure. Three, three hours plus, no problem. Right. Uh, All right. And on that short-winded note, without Jeff, and we're at a minute eighteen. Who'd have thought? <laughs> Thanks for downloading us, everybody. 
Oh. Mantle, you can finish it up because it's sure. always better when the we person hope. with the sound does the talk out. Fair enough. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you're going to join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer, even Alan and Bill. If you've enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. Then I need you. I need you to go to iTunes. And I need you to give us a five-star rating. Even if you hate us, even if you think we yell too much in the microphone, give us a five-star rating. Then tell us why. If you've got any questions, comments, show ideas, drop us a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers, or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. Find us on the Instagram and the Twitters at everyone.racers. Thanks again, and until next week, keep the shiny side up. Unless, like us, you don't have a shiny side, then just keep the dog's belly down. <laughs>